CIA says it no longer uses waterboarding or other enhanced interrogation techniques, but clearly the debate over the program is continuing. I'm joined now by Morris Davis. He's the former chief prosecutor for the U.S. government at the Guantanamo Bay detention camp, but he resigned over, uh, over protest of uh, political interference in the judicial system. And it's five years on now uh, from the end of these programs. The debate's still raging. What do you think that is? Well, it was a, a regrettable chapter in our nation's history, and I think it's one that we just as soon uh, put behind us and not look back. And uh, peeling this scab off this wound, I think, upsets a lot of people. What about this action by the Senate uh, to, to really kind of dig a little bit deeper, uh, investigate this? Uh, is this going to have much of an impact, do you think? Well, hopefully it will have an impact on our conduct going forward. We can't change what's happened in the past, uh, but we do have a choice on, on how we move forward from this. And I think we can learn a lesson from our behavior after 9-11 when uh, you know, the home of the brave became uh, scared and cowardly and we turned to things like torture and waterboarding. So these incidents that took place, as Vice President Cheney said, there were only three people that were waterboarded, uh, not you know, dozens or hundreds as some people think, but that's three too many. And it's in violation of the Convention Against Torture and a lot of the things that we claim to stand for. So I think to be able to look back and learn some lessons on how we got into this uh, mess to begin with would be a useful lesson to learn. Let's talk a little bit about the supporters of waterboarding. One of them, uh, former President Bush, he says uh, information obtained from waterboarding thwarted attacks in the UK at uh, Heathrow Airport. We heard from Vice President, former Vice President Dick Cheney. He said information, of course, led to Osama bin Laden. Um, would you say that uh, there were benefits to it? And, 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 I mean, you hear their argument. What would yeah. you say in response to it? I would say absolutely not. Uh, when I was chief prosecutor, the three people that were waterboarded, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Abu Zubaydah, uh, and Al Nashiri, uh, came to Guantanamo, and I was uh, chief prosecutor for their prosecution. So I've looked at the evidence that. Uh, uh, we had against them, including the evidence we obtained by waterboarding. Uh, whatever benefit, assuming there was some benefit to waterboarding, was far outweighed by the damage it's done to our credibility. I mean, other countries roll their eyes now when we talk about human rights and honoring international law, and they point to Guantanamo, they point to waterboarding, they point to torture, and our policy of impunity where uh, the president said we're going to look forward and not look back. And so in your uh, segment there, the only person that's in prison is John Kariaku, who's the guy that talked about torture. Uh, Dick Cheney, George Bush, Jose Rodriguez, the uh, head of the counterterrorism, uh, counter who destroyed the waterboarding tapes. They're all out on the book tour, you know, giving talks, making money, and John Kariaku's in prison. What if those tapes had not been destroyed? How, how much would that change this, uh, this uh, conversation, do you think? Well, I think it would add to it. I mean, it doesn't change. I mean, I think the, the history is documented of what took place. Uh, the CIA uh, kept copious records of how these sessions were conducted. I think the video would have been a very graphic uh, you know, reminder of, of what took place. So it's not that the evidence is entirely gone, but it was certainly a key piece of it that I think the public had a right to, I mean, this is our government acting in our name, spending our money. We have a right to know what they're doing. And the Senate report, uh, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, spent $50 million uh, preparing this uh, investigation and report, and the taxpayers paid for it, and we ought to get to see uh, what our country did. Uh, what about the Orwellian language aspect of this? Enhanced interrogation techniques, simulated drowning. I heard a man speak uh, at Harvard University a few years back who was waterboarded in another country, and he, and he said, I'm here to tell you it's not simulated drowning. It's drowning that stopped before you die. Uh, he said no one should ever have to go through it. What about that kind of aspect of all of this? Right. Well, John McCain said it again today. There are no if, ands, or buts about it. This was torture. And that people, uh, if, if the goal was to make somebody talk, torture is very effective. They'll talk, and they'll tell you anything you want to hear to make it stop. So uh, the objective ought to be to get reliable, accurate information, not just to make someone talk and certainly going down this path to torture that we've condemned uh, for decades, I think put us on the wrong path and undermined our credibility and we're going to pay this debt uh, for a long time to come. And I think the greatest example is uh, uh, Ibn Sheikh al-Libi. Remember the yellow cake uranium mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. the uh, straw that broke the camel's back for us to go into Iraq? Later on, when he was asked, why did you lie about WMD and Al-Qaeda in Iraq? He said, well, I was being tortured and I wanted to stop, so I told them what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So there's no better example to me of the fallacy of torture than uh, the Iraq war. Morris Davis, thank you so much for your insight tonight. Certainly appreciate it.